Hello and welcome. My name is Tommy and today I am bringing you a review of the Razer Dark Ore RGB Pro. I did receive this product for free for review. However, that won't bias my opinion in any way, shape or form. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so the first thing that I always like to talk about is the aesthetics and feel. This is Corsair's version of the Logitech G502. The shape, size, and weight are very similar. It is a large mouse that is heavy and made for right-hand palm use. It comes with a texturized rubber grippy material on the entire mouse to help keep control. As you can kind of see right here, there's the rubberized grippy material. It has a total of eight buttons. The scroll wheel itself has very definitive steps. Both require a mild to moderate amount of pressure to actuate. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, six, and then seven, eight. It also comes with far more RGB than most mice with a total of nine customizable zones, which can make for some epic combinations. So to show you those different zones, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, seven, eight, and then right there is nine. On the bottom of the mouse, you have a switch that you can either push left to turn on Slipstream Wireless for gaming or right to turn on Bluetooth. In the middle of it, you have the off switch. The slide is very easy to use and move with just one hand with just your thumb. On the very front of the mouse is a plug-in via USB-C for charging and changing the onboard memory profiles and surface tuning. I have had no complaints whatsoever about how this mouse feels. It does not feel cheap. It feels very sturdy and it feels great to use. And obviously it looks professional. I mean, that looks like a high quality mouse and it is. So if you're liking this video so far, make sure to give it a like. If you're disliking it so far, give it a dislike. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while, please do subscribe. Now, moving on over to performance. Previously, wireless tech wasn't viable due to the latency, but now with certain mice, you won't notice a difference between wired and wireless gaming, even in competitive scenarios. This mouse is no exception. I had absolutely no problems playing my favorite games. For example, I have won multiple games in Apex Legends, which I think is one of the most fast paced games out there right now where accuracy and reaction time are needed. I noticed no drops or skips. I have had the pleasure of being able to use wireless mouse from both Razer and from Logitech. And if I'm ranking their wireless tech, just their wireless tech, I would say that Razer's wins and then follow closely by Logitech and then by Corsair's. However, they're all so close together that I really can't give a winner to any of these. If I'm ranking them based on their sensors alone, the first spot goes to Razer, the second spot goes to Logitech, and then the third spot does go to Corsair. And I just always scored better on the Razer than I did with the Logitech than I did with the Corsair. But it's all by very, very small margins that in the, at the end of the day are not going to be all that important. The other thing that I really liked about the Corsair's model is that it comes with both Slipstream Wireless and Bluetooth, which I also think adds to its weight where if you're looking at the, the Razer Viper Ultimate or the Logitech G Pro, neither of these guys come with Bluetooth. It is slim, it's simply their wireless tech only. Most people think that these are the same exact thing. However, they're actually two different technologies. You cannot game well on Bluetooth because its latency is just simply too high because of the tech that it's using where the wireless gaming mice, their tech that they're using for their wireless actually reduces latency to a point where you can't differentiate between them and wired mice. So like I said, it's actually two different technologies. Okay, so let's talk about the IQ software. I'm just going to read this because if I don't, I'm gonna go on a million tangents and it's gonna take forever to get through. So just bear with me not looking at you and instead looking at the script that I've been looking at the whole entire video anyways, because I've already gone on a million tangents because I'm not following the script. So this time I'm going to follow the script. I really enjoy the IQ software. There is a learning curve that needs to be done, but it is short and sweet and takes a lot less time than Razors or Logitech's. It is pretty or relatively intuitive, but best yet the software, it just works. I've never had any problems with IQ crashing, freezing, or not detecting a device. It takes a bit more system resources than I would like to, mostly from system monitoring of your GPU, CPU, RAM, motherboard temps, among others. You can do pretty much whatever you would like to in the software, such as changing RGB color, adjusting performance, DPI polling rate, brightness, or setting up profiles for games. If I had to rate the software, I would be Corsair by a large margin hits the number one spot, then Razer by hits the number two slot, just because it's a bit more straightforward. 
And then third is Logitech's just because I think the usability of trying to figure out what the heck you're supposed to do is just, I hate their UI and everything. I, I, of course, Logitech software is more reliable than, than Razer's, but I don't think it's easier to use. All right, so I'm just going to go over some other pros and cons that I haven't directly addressed in the review so far. So the cost in comparison to other mice for this guy is excellent, coming in at 80 to 90 bucks in comparison to 150. So for example, 80 to 90 bucks, depending on the variant you buy, 150 bucks, 150 bucks, and really any of the Logitech mice that you're getting that are wireless, 150 bucks, any of the Razer mice that you're getting, 150 bucks. Corsair though, made a budget option for 80 to 90 bucks, which is just fantastic, especially for the price and performance and everything that you're getting out of this. It's a really, really good price for it. There's also a side on that you can adjust. There's modular part on the side that you can adjust based off of what you want. There's one that has the wingtip here and then the other one, it just cuts off the wingtip and it's flat. And inside of there, you actually have your dongle that you can carry around. So if you're just trying to take this somewhere, you can throw it in your bag and you're good to go. You don't have to make sure that you're gonna lose your wire, your dongle or not. And no, I'm not gonna make a dirty joke about that, but you're welcome to in the comment section below. It's also very comfortable, especially if you are right-handed and you have palm grip. However, if you are using any of the other grip styles, such as fingertip or claw, it makes it a little more difficult, mostly due to the weight, less so due to the shape. And then of course, if you're left-handed, you're just out of luck. I also just want to add once again, that it has both Slipstream wireless and Bluetooth, which the Razer and the Logitech G Pro do not have. They just have the wireless tech. They do not have Bluetooth. So you could use this on any device that supports Bluetooth without needing to plug in the dongle at all. It also has good battery life, which I didn't really go into, but the battery life is, is really good on it even with lights on. However, you're gonna get a lot better battery life if you have the lights off. Some of the cons that I haven't mentioned thus far is that the DPI button is on here on the side. So depending on how you grip your mouse, you could accidentally press those buttons. Also the same con that I have for the Logitech G502 and that I heard a lot from my reviews for that is that a lot of people were constantly clicking those DPI buttons. Also talking about the feet, the mice feet themselves are not as good as some of the other newer mice that are hitting the market. They're using the same pads as you can see are just your, your classic pads. Same one on the Logitech G Pro. However, Razer upgraded their mice feed to just be a little bit better and then if you're looking at the final mouse they have upgraded feet as well that are just a little nicer a little smoother a little less scratchy but that's by no means saying that the feet on these are bad they're just not as good as some of the competition but you're also paying a lot less for this in comparison to the other mice that i showed you also have to hardwire it in if you're going to change any of the settings for the other mice for the razor and the g pro you just can go into their software and it automatically updates the onboard settings. With this guy, you actually have to plug it in via the USB-C and then do the settings that way. And same with like updating firmware and stuff like that. So it's just a little bit more of a pain in the butt, but you're paying significantly less money for it. And that's where you're seeing where your money is going, which to me is a good trade off to spend a lot less money is just a little less convenience. All right, so the last thing that I wanna talk about is that Corsair and Razer come with some type of dock or and charging cable that keeps it close to your person. One, to make the, the signal a bit stronger so you're not degrading a signal if it's if your computer's far away. And then two, to keep that charging cable really close by so you just unplug it, plug it in and start charging. Where with this guy, it does come with a USB-C to charge, but it doesn't come with a dongle to stick your dongle into. That's definitely a sexual joke that uh, the other ones do so your wireless dongle is going to be in your PC and if your PC isn't close to your mouse then it could degrade performance and it also makes it so you have to keep your charging cable inside of a drawer or something nearby instead of right there on your desk so it just makes it a little less convenient but once again that's where your money is going with the other ones that make it significantly more expensive. All right, moving on to the conclusion. The most important thing is shape, size, and weight for your preference. So that's going to vary based on individual and has nothing to do with things. So even though one mouse could have a better sensor in it, if your grip style and your preferences are more for a different mouse, you're actually going to perform better with the mouse that is more tailored to your preferences than that has the better tech, especially at this age, just because the tech between each of the sensors is so small, like 
the jumps between each of the sensors is so small that you're really not going to notice that big of a difference in game. So what I'm saying here is don't just go buy the Razer Viper Ultimate because I tell you that it has the best sensor. If it doesn't have a good shape, doesn't have good buttons and isn't the right weight for you, then you're not going to perform as better as good as you would if you were performing on this that does have a better shape, buttons and weight for you. If that makes sense i hope it does now if this mouse fits those preferences then i think it would be an excellent choice especially for its price as the performance which includes the wireless the sensor the buttons the weight and the feel are all fantastic it also has a lot of buttons on it so if you were playing moba games or something like that that require a lot of buttons or you work in photoshop or adobe premiere pro or something and you're wanting a mouse that has a whole bunch of buttons this would be an excellent choice I'd also imagine it'd be good for Fortnite just because you could put, probably put all of your building supplies onto your mouse. But overall, I almost have no negatives for this mouse. And the ones that I do have are very minor and for this price can very easily be overlooked. Anyways, that is the end of this review. Hopefully you guys liked it. Give it a like if you did like it. Give it a dislike if you didn't like it. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while, please do subscribe. Mm -hmm.